I suppose a great many of you, if you're not regular watchers of 60 Minutes, may have turned in, uh, tuned in last night to see what the program was all about because the founder of Chobani happened to be on the program talking about his business success. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Croft, the correspondent who covered the story I've, I've met before, Steve and I are both alums from a WSYR Radio in Syracuse. In fact, we both got our formative start there in the broadcast business. He was a few years older than I was and had moved on by that point. And I have some friends who actually worked there with him. Now, we're going way, way back on all of this. Uh, the friends I knew who worked with him uh, in television in that city were very, very liberal. I, I knew these guys from seeing them out on stories on the street and various places like that, and I don't know that that means Steve Croft is extremely liberal. I did watch the entire interview, and I, my impression was it was a very liberal treatment of the story. It was not meant to shine a harsh light. This was not what you would call one of those legendary investigative pieces that Mike Wallace used to do for 60 Minutes. This was a puff piece about a businessman in this country. I give him credit. He saw a market niche, and he was able to come in, and he was able to fill that. And he's been very, very successful. I just think the story may, it gave a little lip service to some of the controversy around the business, and that is the number of people he hires that are immigrants and refugees. What did he say during the course of the story at his plant in upstate New York, which is his original plant, before he built the, uh, build the mega plant, uh, the mega plant that's here in Twin Falls, the, the plant in upstate New York has translators because people speak 19 different languages there. 19 different languages. Now, I know this is controversial in this community. I also understood from the story last night, Chobani pumps $2 billion a year into the local economy. So we're in a bit of a, what you might call, between a rock and a hard place. If you're opposed to having a lot of people hired there, then... <laughs> And, and I got a note from somebody this morning who said he gets breaks when it comes to payroll taxes on hiring some of these outsiders. So that's one of the reasons that he happens to do this. Never mentioned at all during the piece on 60 Minutes. Nine minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 41. It's hard to walk away from $2 billion in local business. On the other hand, there are people in this community who have been concerned very, very, uh, for a very, very long time uh, that these refugee resettlement programs will someday open the door, someday open the door to bringing people here who might be jihadis. And we've all expressed concern about that, even if it's only one person out of every 100. Now, there are refugees who are coming here, and they're coming from other parts of the world, I was reading this morning about the attack in Egypt on the Coptic church yesterday. Coptics make up, uh, Christians, make up 10% of Egypt's population. And we've brought Chaldean Christians here as well from Iraq. I have, because I think that they would be a better fit. I've said this all along. I don't consider that to be bigoted or racist. I think that because they share what might be a little bit more commonality in that culture, and religious faith is part of culture, that they would be a better fit. But I do understand that there are people here, and if they come here, we don't want to necessarily be taking care of them for years and years to come on welfare. We want them to go to work and make a living if they do come here. So what's the answer to all of this? What's the answer? And if somebody actually has a productive job, maybe they won't go on jihad. I, I don't know that answer right off the top because I can't get in, inside the heads of all of these individual people who have different experiences, who have different personalities. I, again, I just don't know. And the other, other aspect, and this was raised by my sister. She sent me an email last week, and it was a story about, it was a link to a story that she shared that said a great many American employers are turning to immigrants and refugees and hiring them because Americans, in some cases, can't pass drug tests. I don't know about you, but if you're working in an, in, a, in an environment where there's a lot of heavy equipment that could chop an arm off or, or your fingers, do you want someone who's all gooned up on heroin working next to you? And that's creating a problem for employers. Because if I'm running a business, 
I'm trying to find an efficient way to do it. And if my employees are all showing up on dope and they're end, they end up cutting off body parts and harming other people, I'm going to end up paying a lot of money and I could be out of business eventually because of that. So maybe it's time that some people in our own country shaped up and then you might be able to get these jobs and get in on the profit sharing because it was mentioned at the very end of that story last night. He's giving his employees 10% of the equity in the company, which is what, now worth billions of dollars. Here he is explaining that he hired refugees because he said they needed jobs and he needed workers. I will hire translators and will provide transportation. Let them come and make your yogurt with us. And they worked out? Ah, oh, perfectly. Um, they, they, they are the most loyal, hardworking people along with everybody else is here. Right now in our plant in here, we have 19 different nationalities. 16 different translators. I want to add to that. I went to hear an anti-refugee speech from Pete Nielsen. He used to serve in the state legislature from up in the area around Mountain Home, but his district covered parts of Twin Falls County. He's since been replaced by Megan Blanksma. Uh, and, and he gave a speech, and I was pleased with it until he mentioned that on his farm, he hired immigrant labor because those people happen to be better workers than a lot of the neighborhood boys. And I thought, well, you're just nothing but a hypocrite. But at least he's, in some respects, he's giving the same argument as the owner of Chobani. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, good morning Bill. Great show as always. Off to a good start. Hey, listen, just a little side note there regarding the drug test. I, I stopped into the subway here in Twin a couple weeks back. And I was asking the gal there, she was the manager, and I go, so do you guys have a drug testing policy? And she says, you know, we're owned by a company out of Utah that owned, I don't know how many subways from Idaho Falls to Boise. And it says, we couldn't find people to pass a drug test, so the company scrapped the drug test. <laughs> so yeah, I'm telling you, you're telling me some guy can be all loaded up on dope making a sandwich? He goes, that's right. You can't find people to pass a simple drug test. You don't want That's them near ridiculous. the slicer. Boy, if you've got a slice bologna and you've got somebody who's in that condition, don't ask what's in your sandwich. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> you have uh, a great day and uh, look forward to your show. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I've got a couple of other things I'd, I'd want to add to this this morning. This is Steve Croft. Now, Governor Butch Otter, last week, uh, the Idaho Freedom Foundation said that Governor Otter had been abducted by aliens. Not my phrase, theirs. That was then picked up and used as the title of a Washington Examiner story about Governor Otter Friday. I saw it Saturday morning. Governor Otter, Otter vetoed bills that would have limited civil asset forfeiture. Uh, not that it's a huge problem in this state, but there were folks in the legislature who were looking to limit that as well uh, to put some more restrictions on, on it possibly being used. And then he vetoed a bill that would have also reduced restrictions on cosmetologists, these people who, who do hair. Because a lot of these organizations, these trade organizations, are just trying to eliminate the competition and inflate prices. So uh, the folks at Idaho Freedom Foundation said that he had been abducted by aliens. Listen to how Steve Croft describes the governor here. The situation has cooled somewhat, and Hamdi enjoys the full support of Idaho's very popular and very conservative governor, Butch Otter. I think his care about his employees, whether they be refugees or they be folks that were born 10 miles from where they're working, uh, I believe his advocacy for that person is no different. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, Governor Otter is a nice guy. I mean, I've met him and, and he's been on this program. He even said that when it comes to war-torn nations like Syria, we should have a pause with refugee resettlement from those countries. And he made that announcement first on this program uh, well over a year ago, after I think the first Paris, uh, Paris attack took place. And I give him credit for that. On the other hand, to call him the popular conservative governor, Russ Fulcher nearly knocked him off in a primary three years ago. So I don't know that he's, he's quote, all that popular, at least not any longer. And, and I wanted to share that. I also, though, have to add a couple of other caveats to this whole discussion this morning. As I was as I was listening to the whole story from 60 Minutes last night, as I said, I thought it was just a puff piece. 
But you can be, you can't have concerns about refugee resettlement and who's coming here because you've been concerned about how we vet people. Give credit to the president, and he's kept his foot on the accelerator with his rhetoric about this because just his rhetoric alone, the courts have, have tied his hands when it comes to trying to actually put in place orders that would bar people coming from those countries until we can straighten all of this out. But by his rhetoric alone, the numbers have dropped. I mean, they're down more than 50% as far as refugees coming to the United States looking for asylum here. And with Neil Gorsuch, you would think the president now has an ally as these cases that have tied his hands so far make their way along will allow him to actually actually enforce this policy. Now that he would appear to have, as I say, appear, key word there, a new ally tipping the balance of the Supreme Court of the United States. But if one out of every 100 potential refugees could be a bad dude, that still means 99 are just trying to get on with their lives. Somebody sent me a message last week, and they were alarmed because they were driving by the Deseret store, and they saw a couple of women who apparently were of African ancestry, and they were carrying their loads atop their heads. The reason they do that is because they've learned how to balance them, and, and I thought, this guy was upset about that. Well, first of all, it's not illegal to carry your groceries atop your head. If you like, you could stick them between your ankles and waddle down the street with them, and nobody would arrest you for that. That's not a crime. And sometimes I see these things, and it gives those of us who have legitimate concerns a bad name that you have some fruitcakes in this community. I don't know. I'll call them neo-Nazi scum who would literally try. They're trying to pick fights with these people. They're going into their neighborhoods trying to find a violent confrontation. They're just beyond the pale, and they've threatened local officials. They've threatened, uh, they threatened you know, the mayor, our prosecutor, any number of people. And yet, we've said it before, the policy is a federal policy. The policy is not a city policy or a county policy or a state policy. To my knowledge, none of these people have tried to address these issues directly with Mike Crapo or Jim Risch or Mike Simpson. The latter might not help you at all, but I don't know that anybody has made that effort. And they, they have simply focused their efforts, their rage, if you will, on various people in this community who really don't have any any impact on any of this other than the fact it rolls downhill from Washington and if you pick up the newspaper tomorrow the Times News you're going to read quite an expose on that in my column alone because I am now and I, I don't have any intention of being a martyr like Alan Berg he was a talk show host killed in Denver by these by these uh, inbred fascists 30 years ago I have no intention of joining him. So for my own protection, I'm going to go into some detail in that newspaper column about it tomorrow and what I'm talking about. But I don't enjoy being threatened, and you people are giving, and, and they've done it, you people are giving that movement a bad name and making all of us who have legitimate concerns look like we're kooks as well. It's 42 and 20 minutes after 8. I want to mention we have a visitor coming in Wednesday morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. That'll be Dr. Jonathan Tripp or one of his associates from Tripp Family Medicine here in Twin Falls. We do it every Wednesday morning. We talk about medical issues, and you can get a little free advice by chiming in on the air, giving us a call while the doctor is in. Tripp Family Medicine is still looking for new patients. Also, they can often, often being not always, but often see you on the very same day if you call with a medical issue. We should point out the office is located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office here in Twin Falls. Coming up a little later this morning, Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing. Uh, Randy's going to be joining us in about 20 minutes. Also, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil will be joining us in the next hour at 920, scheduled at 920 to talk about uh, his experiences meeting Don Rickles on a couple of occasions. And Rickles was a big supporter of the U.S. military. We may also get the colonel's input on what's going on in Syria right now as well. 823, and we have a caller, I believe, with us. Let me give you the telephone number first of all, 736-0300. And you're up next. You're on Top Story with Bill Colley. Yes, my uh, grandparents and, and great-grandparents were immigrants to this country, so I respect people that come here for a better life. But I, 
I resent, and I, I think we need to object to the idea of uh, having Sharia law uh, becoming legal or having any effect in this country. Some woman in uh, Montana State Legislature the other day said, all right, I'll go along with a ban on that, but she said, I also want a ban on Mosaic law. Who in this country has ever pushed for Mosaic law? I'm not sure that anybody has. Although if you go to the Supreme Court of the United States and you look up at the freeze outside the building, you'll actually see Moses, uh, the lawgiver, there. So it is part of our tradition, if you will. I, I'm just the, the thing you've got to remember about all of this is people say, well, you know, I mean, who's uh, Randy Staple has said it. Who's mustering out in the desert right now to, uh, to, uh, to create jihad? Well, are we going to wait until it happens? Ask them in Sweden. Ask them at the Coptic Church in, uh, in Egypt yesterday. Ask them about that. The fact of the matter is, you do have to take sometimes preemptive measures. 824, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You're on the air. You're up next. Well, the real problem, Bill, is that they will not assimilate the Muslim, Islamic um, theology or theocracy, they will not assimilate. They hate Christians and Jews, and that was proven just what happened yesterday. It's it. And we already have areas where we have enclaves on, in the United States, and of course, in France and Britain, and over there, they we got all areas where the police don't go. That's going to happen here as soon as we just keep bringing more of these people in here. And where you say we don't know which ones are terrorists, but when push comes to shove, and they're given the orders to obey Allah under, you know, the Koran, I can guarantee you we're in major trouble. They're going to side with those leaders, radical or whatever they are. And so uh, it's a real danger, and we need to – Trump is right on this. and But we aren't bringing in refugees other than – the Muslims. That's 98% plus. And we need to have these as safe zones over there rather than bringing them here. Sure. I, I read this morning. Do. I read this morning online where the refugee camps that have been set up in places like Jordan are actually quite safe. Nobody is wallowing in mud there and nobody's starving and there isn't rampant disease. So it's been handled very, very well. And there was a fellow on Fox News this morning, and apparently he stunned people at CNN a few days ago by saying the same thing, said, I want to go home. Well, absolutely. And I think this whole thing, the, the goal is world conquest. And this, so the goal is to, you know, basically infiltrate every country and uh, take over. And you do it either by numbers, by population, because they have a lot of kids, and or by jihad. Those are the two methods, but world conquest is the goal, and it's a it's a theocracy hiding behind a religion. It's not a true religion. It's a theocracy for world conquest. And I thank you much for the call. It's coming up on 827. Um, if, and th this is the thing, there's a point where you get to, uh, well, call it a tipping point. At the moment, we don't have to worry about that in this country, and that's why liberals tell you, well, we don't need to have a, it enshrined in our own laws that there will never be Sharia. But if you look at Europe, you know, they're dealing with those issues and they're dealing with them constantly. If we close the door today, I don't think we'd ever have to worry about that. But if liberals had their way, uh, a, a writer at National Review said this morning that Hillary Clinton would like to bring 22% of Syria's population to this country. Well, number one, they'd all be voters. They'd all be Democrat voters, most likely. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Clinton. That's, I think, the, the whole goal of this, just like the whole notion liberals have that we don't need a border to our south as well, that people can just come here and they can all vote for a piece of the pie or a bigger piece of the pie or your pie. We all realize that's not realistic, those of us who actually are using a little rational thought in all of this. But if tomorrow, you know, we stop the spigot, we're probably going to be okay. You're going to still have people who get involved in random attacks and read some stuff online and still decide they're going to go shoot up a party in San Bernardino, California and gun down all of their friendly co-workers because they feel commanded to do it. But you, you, limit, you limit the scope of this. That's all. That's all. Hey, quick note. I wanted to point out, uh, because we're getting near the end of the half, first half hour here, Randy Staples will be along in about 15 minutes. 
Uh, got a lot to talk to him about uh, Governor Otter and also the race for lieutenant governor in the state of Idaho. Seems to be getting a little bit more exciting. It's not very nice outside this morning. I stepped outside a few minutes before the show, blustery, cold, and the weather forecast, which looked pretty good for the end of this week, is now starting to look well like today. Uh, so you're going to have need for that furnace, and in some areas we'll be below freezing this, uh, this uh, well, tonight. And So if that's the case, and I should point out the weather is a service of our friends at Mountain Home Auto Ranch in Mountain Home, Idaho. But you still need that furnace in some cases. And if you're having difficulty with it because you've overworked it so much this uh, this winter and now into the spring, call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric. They'll come out. They'll get the job done. They'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winters are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678 678- 0459. That's 6780459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 41. Yeah, it's close enough. I'll call it 830. I was going to share actually a couple of notes that I happened to see at a pair of publications this morning about what we're dealing with on a worldwide scale with all of this. Coming up on 834, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News 1310.com. And we're at 41. I do want to mention I put on a hooded sweatshirt today that, well, I bought it oh, last summer and it fit pretty well. Uh, now it's just this big baggy thing I've got over my shoulders. I had some measurements done last week and I'd lost four inches off my neck and I. Uh, gosh, I'd lost nearly a foot around my uh, my waist as well. Uh, that is because of the total body transformation system. It's not a yo-yo diet. It's scientifically proven. And it's backed up by scientific researchers at some of the nation's most prestigious universities, Columbia, Cornell, and Tufts. And I also wanted to point out, too, as well, it's proven to burn six times more fat, and you lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. You still get a healthy amount of calories every day. The meal replacement plan often healthier than the foods you're replacing as well as about the same cost as the foods you're replacing. The average participant will drop 22 pounds and lose 4 inches off his or her waist in just 60 days. And I also wanted to point out too, uh, within a first, the first month or so, there's an unconditional full money back guarantee. If you'd like to know more, call Don Chandler, Marketing Executive Don Chandler. He's here in Twin Falls, 208-731-3560. Don's at 731-3560. I also wanted to mention, Don lost over 50 pounds himself using the same method and uh, did wonders for him too as well. 835 now, Bill Colley with you on Top Story, talking about how you just don't know who happens to be coming to your country from some of these other parts of the world and why you do need, as Donald Trump says, better vetting procedures. This is the National Chief of Police from Sweden speaking this morning talking about the attack the other day by a Muslim immigrant. There was nothing in the system that indicated that he would do anything uh, like that uh, happened on, 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 on Friday. If we would have had knowledge, information, of course, we would have acted differently. Yeah. <laughs> we would have gone out, patted him on the head and said, we're good people, so let me bend over. Uh, I, I don't... You got to understand, it's a very liberal country. But a few more of these things happen over there, it won't be very liberal very long. And that's what's driving people. That's why Marine Le Pen, she may not finish first in the uh, the election in France, but she's likely going to be one of the two remaining candidates in the runoff election because she says it's time to bring an end to this. And you got French liberals saying, "Oh, they were such good people." Well. Remember, when the Germans came marching in, they said, Oh, ha, 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 sure, take our country. Oh, here's my wife and daughters, too. Ha, 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 ha. But she actually has more backbone than most men have in that country. Writing today at the Wall Street Journal, this is an editorial, and uh, that's likely Paul Gigot. He says, Egyptian president, because we had an attack there over the weekend, as you know. There are roughly 50 people dead now in that church attack. It's Palm Sunday. The Pope of the Coptic Church was there when it happened. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi denounced the attacks, but they raised more questions about his government's competence in protecting the Coptic Christians. 
yeah, this is, a, this is what happens in these majority countries where Christians are the minority, or as we said in places like Sweden, France, Belgium, England, where all of a sudden you don't even have to be in a minority. Well, of course, Europe's not very Christian anymore, but you, you could still be in the majority. But once the minority gets large enough, this type of stuff starts happening on a much more frequent basis. The Copts make up about 10% of Egypt's 92 million people, but many are looking to emigrate amid the jihadist terror wave. And who's, who's allowing them? You don't hear Hillary Clinton saying, well, we should bring them here because we know that they're in serious trouble of being wiped out. You can't call it genocide because they're not necessarily a distinct race, but I guess you could call it faith side. And then I have this from The Spectator, Damian Thompson. And he says, a spokesman for the Egyptian Ministry of Foreign Affairs tweeted that the Palm Sunday massacres were another obnoxious but failed attempt against all Egyptians. The writer at The Spectator says, really? It looks to me, he writes, like an attack on Christians simply because they are Christians. It would be equally fatuous to claim that Boko Haram's unrelenting slaughter of Christians is directed against all Nigerians. We have opportunities here. In this country, we haven't we haven't stumbled like Europe has. At least we're not to that point where we can take a stand on all of this. We do have those opportunities. The point is, do we have the political will to do it, and can we make the liberals understand that we aren't immune from it? We're coming up on 8:40. Randy Staple is from Idaho Weekly Briefing. Will be joining us in just a few minutes. I do want to mention our friends at Waddell and Reed here in Twin Falls, Idaho. These are people who've been in the investment business since 1937, one of the oldest firms in the country to offer mutual funds. And, in fact, Waddell and Reed offers two mutual fund families and manages both of those. These are people who will, will invest by a conservative nature. Do they know what they're doing? Again, 80 years in business is a pretty good, pretty good answer to all of that. They'll help you build, as a client, proper expectations. Waddell and Reed will build plans around your needs and goals and help you manage money. Also at Waddell and Reed here in Twin Falls, they take planning personally. 